Hi guys, hope everyone's well and welcome back to the Improvement Podcast. So today I'm going to be touching on how to structure your legs. So as I've said before, the main thing we want to first ensure is in a good spot is effort and good form. And yeah, order and the exercises you choose come after that because like I've said, doesn't matter what exercise you choose if the form's not really amazing on it because you could be doing a movement to target your quad but if you're not doing it correctly then it's not going to target your quad well so it's execution's key execution and effort because again on the other hand if we're if our form's perfect but we're not getting close to failure then we're still not going to be maximizing our progress we're still not going to get the most out of our movements so uh yeah going to go through how i structure legs quick to update on myself first so i am currently when i'm recording this two and a half weeks out from my first show and uh, this is me recording this on the first day before it goes live uh, so two days prior if you're listening to this on the saturday and uh, yeah really good week of training so far so i'm happy with that uh, definitely feeling the need for a rest day today as by the time i've done all three of my sessions i do feel pretty draggy as well as obviously when you are two and a half weeks out and you're relatively lean you're gonna feel a bit a bit smashed as well as a whole but i'm trying not to tell myself that and tell myself oh i feel this i feel that because it will only make things worse if that makes sense but uh yeah so jumping into the episode going on to the quad focus session if let's say you have two leg days one could be more hamstring focused or what you could do is instead of doing like a push pull leg split you could do a pull push legs and do an RDL on or a stiff leg deadlift or a hamstring focused deadlift variation on the Monday and then you could do like a more of a quad focus session on the Wednesday and still tag in some hamstrings the reason why you'd want to do like a a pull push legs instead of a push pull legs is if you're training a hip hinge variation on a Tuesday and then training legs on a Wednesday you're going to be pretty battered your hamstrings are already a pretty taxed so that might not be ideal so jumping into the session usually the first exercise i like to program and i like to perform is adductor so reason being is adductor i think it's an absolute game changer for leg development and the adductor is the muscle basically on the inside of your legs and it makes your legs look so much thicker from the front and from the back so i think it's something very valuable and as well as the value it has it doesn't really take away from the rest of the movements it's like if you get off from the doctor machine after doing a few sets you don't think oh i'm absolutely spent i'm not going to perform well on my next movement because it doesn't quite have that effect whereas let's say you've done walking lunges or something really taxing first then your performance might suffer but yeah it's not too fatiguing doesn't really batter your legs much and it doesn't take away from the other movements while having a lot of benefit from it and since it has a lot of benefit from it, it makes sense doing it first because that's where you'll get the most from the movement and i'd argue if you've done let's say a doctor's last you're gonna not perform as well but you're not going to perform much better in the movements prior whereas if you do a doctor's first you'll perform well but it's not going to take away from the movements after if that makes sense so it makes sense to do them first in my opinion or towards the start of your session unless you have really freaky big adductors or you're limited by how much weight you can lift because let's say you're using the stack on the machine for example and uh, then you might want to maybe play some of it later and when you're doing you're training your adductors you basically want to take the muscle through as large of an active range of motion as you can basically you want to go as wide as you comfortably can without forcing yourself into that stretch position and uh, controlling the changes of direction especially in the stretch because it's a bit of a you could say it's a bit of a funny or aggressive position to be in with your legs open in that position uh, so you just want to obviously control the weight minimize injury risk of course and usually I like to pause in the shortened position as well it makes sense if we're doing let's say one exercise for a doctor we don't want to just be controlling it in like the stretch position like we want to make sure that our doctor is actually moving the weight through the whole movement and usually 
I do like a rest pause set, so like a set to failure, rest 20 seconds, and then repeat the set again another two times. Uh, that's basically what it would look like, or maybe like two straight sets, meaning two sets, maybe one in like the 10 to 12, and one uh, like 12 to 15, or something like that. Usually on adductor work, I don't go crazy heavy like below 10 reps, because it's just a bit hard to get into position, It'll feel a bit, bit brutal doing it, if that makes sense. It just, I just feel like it feels better doing a bit of a higher rep range. And you can do this twice weekly in terms of training your doctor. If you want to maximize your leg development, eh, it makes sense to, just like any other body part. If you want to maximize it, you can train it frequently. And that's basically what helped me get my strength up on my doctor machine at my gym, eh, just doing it weekly. Because I was doing it twice and different rep ranges, like a different setup each session, and like I would just be able to, I was able to progress it so fast just because I wasn't used to training it because we were in lockdown and uh, two times a week frequency helped a lot. So after doing a doctor movement uh, on the doctor machine, I like to then go into, let's say, a leg extension. And a leg extension basically trains the rectus femoris which is part of our quad that we don't really train much during other movements like let's say a hack squat or a leg press or a barbell back squat we can't maximally train this muscle we can't fully shorten it and train it then and basically recruit it that well in other movements which makes the leg extension if you have one a very very valuable piece of kit to use and kind of a no-brainer if you want full leg development in my opinion it makes sense having it in there for that reason uh, if you're wanting complete leg development. Uh, if you don't have one, there's not that much good replacement, so move gym. Or if you don't want to, I wouldn't mess about really trying to set one up with a cuff. I just think I'd just leave it, if that makes sense. More hassle than it's worth, but most gyms do have a leg extension, so you should be sorted. And on leg extension... Like I said, it trains your rectus femoris, which is part of your quad. And the re leg extension lets us fully contract our quad or fully squeeze it at the top. So when your leg's straight, think about it. Where What other movement allows you to put tension on your quad with your leg being fully locked out? If you think about a leg press, a squat, when our leg's locked out, our joints are stacked and we've got no tension on them. So it makes sense on leg extension being our only opportunity to load the quad in the shortened position or when our legs straight to spend time there, to pause there and hold that part of the rep. So usually like a one to two second pause at the top. For clients I usually say two seconds because when you say one it is really quick. So if you say two it usually is a one second pause. So yeah, uh, a good decent pause at the top, making sure you're holding it there. And something I see a lot of people make mistake wise is when they do a leg extension, they throw it up, they let it lower quite a bit, and then they catch it. And that's not your quad fully short or fully contracted. That's your quad getting to the fully shortened position, but you're using too heavy a weight to maintain that, so you let it lower a bit, and then you catch it. And catching it there in that position is not going to be great on like your tendons and ligaments and that, if you're letting the weight get thrown up and then catching it on the way down, if that makes sense. So yeah, after that, I then like to move on to a hamstring curl. And the reason why a hamstring curl is, again, if we're only doing, in this case, one hamstring movement in a session, it makes sense doing it earlier because if you're only doing one movement for it, if you're doing it at the very end, you're probably not going to get much out of it. And at the end of the day, so you've got your quad, you've got your hamstring, your hamstrings basically makes up the whole back of your leg, so it doesn't make sense if, let's say, we're doing one movement, doing it at the very end, because then it's getting not a lot of work towards it, as well as not a lot of focus towards it, because it's at the very end of the session. So, putting it before your compounds where you've got some energy, and allowing you to warm your knee up before going on to the, like, whatever compounds you're doing is a good idea. So, if you've got, like, a seated or a line hamstring curl, both can work, both have their pros and cons. A seated hamstring curl 
won't allow you to get as good a contraction or shorten the hamstring as much but it does allow you to be a bit more locked in train it for a larger range of motion and is shown to potentially cause more muscle growth just because we build muscle best in the stretched and mid position of a muscle length uh, and lying one you could say it lets you fully contract your hamstrings which is good but to be fair which one feels the best for yourself and which one do you feel like you can get the most from if that makes sense like if let's say you do a line hamstring curl and your lower back sore whereas when you do a seated one your hamstrings in absolute bits you but you don't feel it in anywhere else and i'd probably say you could look at your execution on the line one but to the seated one will probably be better but no need to stress about it if you've got let's say two different leg days you could do one on each if you have the choice or if you only have one then just do whatever feels best or whatever one you want and in terms of a hamstring curl again when you think about a hamstring curl this is only exercise where we can basically load our hamstring put weight on our hamstring with our leg fully bent because we don't really do that throughout any other exercise in the gym so it makes sense to spend time in the paused position uh, and also just making sure we're keeping everything else still and not moving our hips about not moving off our body about and we're just moving at the knee ideally uh, and rep range wise same with the leg extension i don't really go super low reps on it because it doesn't feel great doing the isolation movements let's say a leg extension doing a five rep max on it it will probably feel pretty horrific on your knee uh, so usually it's like an eight to ten then one twelve to fifteen but again if let's say someone's plateaued on it then i might change the rep range up or change it to some extent and uh, also whatever rep range you can keep good form with as well something to consider in terms of the next few exercises so exercise four and five usually i like these to then be quad compound movements and usually it's like a squat variation and a leg press or like a squat variation and a single leg variation uh, the reason why is usually like doing a squat and a leg press is because they kind of complement each other because a squat allows us to train our a leg in the like get a good stretch if that makes sense and allow us to train our like quad for a large range of motion the leg press usually you can't do it through large over range of motion but you're more stable you can put more weight for your quads just because you're you've got a seat support in you you don't have to worry about your upper body and it allows you to really put a lot of weight in the middle position of the quads muscle length if that makes sense and so they both complement each other a wee bit there and usually if you've got let's say two leg days or i like to have some sort of single leg variation in there uh, if it's a walking lunge if it's a split squat and this could be in instead of the leg press on the other session if you've got two leg days a week or you could do it instead of the leg press anyway and if let's say you've got one quad focus leg day then you could put three movements in one being a single leg variation but if you've got two leg days eh, only two movements is usually a bit better maybe because it allows you to recover in time for the next one and it means you're just getting the most out of each set whereas if let's say you do three and then at, like later on in the week you've got another three your legs still might be battered so yeah what just to quick quickly summarize on the quad compound movements usually one's a squat variation so maybe like a hack squat a barbell back squat a smith machine squat next i like a leg press uh, so whatever leg press your gym has really uh, or it could be another like variation of like like i say a split squat if you don't have leg press and if you train legs once a week then i might put another quad compound movement in there which would be a single leg movement if you train it twice a week and not just once no sorry if you train train it once a week and you don't train legs twice then i'd probably maybe look to put a third movement in there that's definitely going to be single leg and each exercise usually around two sets especially if it's like a beginner in programming for uh, and the reason being is doing one set's a bit too little for them 
because they've not learned to develop intensity to be honest most individuals uh, so yeah or if let's say you're carrying soreness into the next session when you're training legs then you could look to decrease that you could do more but I'd start off maybe doing two and just really focusing on maximizing the sets you have because what you usually find is if you do a lot of sets you usually don't have the ability to put as much effort into them because you know you've got let's say three sets on leg press so you'll hold yourself back on the first one and maybe two unconsciously anyway exercise six is usually oh sorry touching on the rep ranges during the quad compo movements during compo movements i usually feel a bit better going into a lower rep range so in the squat it could be like let's say one set in the five to nine rep range then one set in the 12 10 to 12 as for the leg press, usually it feels not as great if you're doing a really low rep set. So usually I like to keep it maybe like a 10 to 12, then a 12 to 15, or maybe like a 8 to 10, not really any lower than that ever. Or uh, if you're doing the one set, a higher rep range. But yeah, usually doing a leg press, you've already got so much load on it that you don't really want to go super low. It just feels a bit poor on your knees, in my opinion. And yeah, next exercise, exercise six, is usually a calf movement. And you can do it standing or seated, uh, just whatever calf variation you can. Usually, if you're doing one, I'd choose standing. The reason being is it trains a larger amount of the calf, which is the gastrocnemius and the soleus. That's the part of the calf that will usually train during standing, whereas during seated, we usually train just more of the soleus. So it makes sense if you're doing one, doing the standing. If you're doing calves twice a week and you have the option, you could do it seated once and then standing once. But usually, I'd go for a standing. And again, on this, usually I'd do about two to three sets, usually three, unless there's any reason not to. Uh, and if you're doing legs twice a week, then you could consider, you could maybe do two sets twice a week instead. And maybe do like a rest pause, so like I touched on on the adductor, doing a set in the maybe like the 12 to 15 rep range, resting for maybe 20 seconds, doing it again, resting 20 seconds and doing it again. And usually in terms of rep ranges, I feel, I feel like it's a bit more beneficial doing calves in let's say like the 12 to 15. Again, I don't go on a super low rep range especially on isolation movements, it just feels a bit better doing a bit of a high rep range. And what I focus on during calf movements is really controlling the changes of the direction, making sure I'm spending time squeezing my calf hard at the top and squeezing my, and holding that stretch position at the bottom. But not just completely going limp and letting it force me in that stretch position, making sure I'm controlling it and the attention still on my calf, if that makes sense. And, uh, that's about it. So you, maybe depending on what the rest of your week looks like uh, and when you train abs, if you train abs in any other sessions. If not, usually I train, I'd put abs in after calves. Just like, again, two to three sets, maybe a high intensity technique like a rest pause uh, and doing something like a rope cable crunch, doing things like a, like a ab machine crunch or a hanging leg raise and doing like I said, two to three sets, 12 to 15 rep range, something like that. Focus on getting a large amount of bend in your spine because that basically means you're taking your abs for a large range of motion and then stretching your abs at the top, but not too not too aggressive that you're putting a strain on your back and arching it crazy excessively, if that makes sense. So hope this helped. Uh, Try to keep it informative, but not, not ramble on too much just because there's a lot to fit in and that's a lot of information to take in at once but a quick recap i like to start with like with a adductor a leg extension then a hamstring curl and then two quad compo movements and then a calf movement usually abs after that however if you train legs just once a week then i'd maybe put another quad compo movement in there whereas if you train legs twice a week then i'd maybe put let's say one less set of quad compounds and maybe do a wee bit less sets on calves potentially just so they're not sore for the next session same with anything else that could be sore but yeah hope this helped as always thank you very much for listening please like share subscribe 
leave a comment, review, depending on what you're listening to it on. And hope everyone has a great day and a great rest of their week.